saying? I grew up in that era of, of, the, of the 90s where I was, you know, a teenager and just watching Michael. And, and I never even being, I'm here in New York. And, you know, between the Chicago and New York rivalry, but I was like a Chicago fan. So, like, my Wait, uncle, you was a Chicago fan? Yeah, my what? uncle used to, because I was a Michael Jordan fan. So, my uncle, he a long time Knicks fan from Bernard King. From, okay. You like, know, from me. Walt Frazier. That's you know, so we, we sitting in the house watching a game, and I'm quietly rooting for Mike when the Bulls, when the Bulls, <laughs> yeah, he wanted to slap my head off. <laughs> So I, you know, that's how I like watching the last dance is, is um, you know, it takes me back to those feelings because I remember, you know, growing up through those ninety years and why, and being a Bulls fan and just just being a fan of they of their team camaraderie too. Like you know them be, them a team like you know Michael Jordan was, you know, the superstar of course, but they also showed how a strong team, you know, prevails and can be successful as well. When you watch that, right? Cause you know I've been in, a, you know, with my daughter. She, we've been. I've been in a lot of music studios with all the great producers, and and I'm watching great people. You know, from even been in a studio when Meek is in there, and all mm -hmm. of, like. What are the similar? What is that common thread then when you watch the behind the scenes of a locker room that you mm -hmm. say, "Damn, that's the same stuff that we do in music." Yeah, it's 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 definitely. Uh it's a team effort. And, and at the same time, like you said, where, where, where you get to see the behind the scenes, a lot of times people don't see the behind the scenes in music, but when you see something like this, doc, like these documentaries, the same thing in sports, y'all might not see, everybody might not see what y'all go through behind the scenes. And the same thing with music, everybody might not see the, the, the engineer or the producer or, you know, the key little things that make that hit record. You just see the final product, you know right, what I'm mean? saying? Right. So, um, I get to see, I got to see that. And, um, even if you came up in sports, you know, as a, as a, as a teenager or as a kid, you know, some of the backstory behind women, you know what I'm saying? You know what, what you had to do to get there. So it, 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 it was great to see that too. Like that's, that, that was one thing about the documentary that was cool is that it showed those little elements, you know, like what was going on with Phil in the, in the organization and right. what was going on with Dennis, you know what I mean? Like, as a teenager, I didn't even know that Dennis was doing, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even oh, know. you didn't know? Nah, you know, oh. like, Dennis was, like, was going off to Vegas for a couple of days and needed that, like, you know, but as now... No, that ain't, hey, man, that's the it. one they let you know about. The yeah. dude, would, like, he couldn't do this in this era. Because it's yeah. too camera phone. It's too much, yeah, it's too much going on. So everybody yeah. would have seen where he was, but that right. wasn't that was the one that they said, Okay, we're gonna allow you to go do. Right. They didn't talk about the ones that he just did on his own. It was right. like, I'm out. And right. Like he was a different breed of person, like obviously, but there are guys in probably in the music industry, you go, Well, this dude, when we when we start, we're gonna do studio. If I'm gonna do a song with him or a rock, do something with him. It's gonna start at three in the morning. Oh, this yeah. Man, this gonna start at eight. Everybody got their own course of uh, how they do things. Even when I just work with Kiss on the uh, Freddie versus Jason project, Kiss likes to work early. I'm more like a night owl because I, 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 that's just the way you know everybody come in. Sometimes you come in from the club. Sometimes you just go in late and you just up all night. Vampire kind of hour. Right. Like Kiss works early. You know what I'm saying? So by like. 12, 1 o'clock, Kiss is falling asleep. Kiss ready to go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. He work on a different ship to hours. So I had to even, we had to adjust that too. You know, sometime I drag Kiss out a little late and then sometime I got to go get up, get, get in early because he, you know, he, he working early. So it's just everybody calls to work. But, you know, I guess the overall goal is that success of, of the W, you know what I'm saying? We had that, I had that with a dude named Mad Max, Vernon Maxwell. Vernon Maxwell. In, we in the playoffs, fam. <laughs> in the playoffs against Phoenix, we down 3-1. Mm. So we were the first team to come back and win mm -hmm. the series down 3-1. So mm. we're down 3-1. We have a team meeting. So Rudy's writing, Rudy Top John is writing all this thing. He stops to me. Hold on, man. Nah, this ain't it. We Reason we losing, y'all got me going to bed at 11 o'clock, checking curfew. I ain't like that. And y'all ain't like that either. 
that he, he start pointing guys out. Sam, you know you hang out with me, Cassell. Yeah. You know, and Kenny, you going to be out there one or three nights, too? Like, if y'all ain't out the night, this is the night before the game now. If right. y'all ain't out the night, I'm coming on banging on everybody's room. So fast. The club was across the street from where we stayed in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. He bangs on everybody's door, brings the whole team to the club the night before. So he's like, Kenny, go do what you do. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I go on the microphone in the club, and I'm like, yo, what's up, Phoenix? The Rockets are here, and we're going to be back. And the, and the whole team explodes. We come mm -hmm. back and win the series. But if that dude didn't say this is the way we normally operate, we would have been sitting there going to bed at 10 o'clock, not being able to function the way we do. With that said, do you believe in that, right? You, do you believe in everybody's conditioning is more – it's catered to them, and then they come together as a team and can work that. Because I like, I know a lot of organizations and coaches. They always try to like conform, no. you know, players and everybody to be on the same type of schedule or timing or no. But, but we don't know. believe that. We didn't believe right. that. We and then check it out, fam. Akeem was a Muslim. We built during Ramadan, which is now. Shout out to all my Muslim friends out there now. Ramadan, mm -hmm. we built a a praying area for him. And we couldn't play music during that time for him. Like, mm -hmm. no, no team music, nothing in the, Like, yo, we built a whole thing. Everybody mm -hmm. has to be respected. But you got to create, fab a box that everybody can live in. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody jumps outside the box, you go, yo, you, you coach don't have to say nothing. The players right. monitor themselves. they like, no, 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 he jumped outside the box. That's what I looked at as what Phil was doing with Rodman. Like, you know what I mean? And yep. it probably started with them trying to, like, control him or box, box him in, so to say. But then they said, like, for us to get the best dentist that we need for as a team, he got to go to Vegas for a day or two and, and, and let, it, let it out and then come back and, you know, he's going to find his, his, his strength there. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what I saw, too, Phil, Phil being a big, a, 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 a great coach was yep. able to handle all the personalities of the team. Who handles that in a music studio for you? Is it you or is it producer? Is it combination? What is that? Who is that? Yeah, it, it, might, it, might, it might really be a, a combination of things. And, and sometimes it depends who you work with. Like if I work with Pharrell, right. Pharrell becomes like the Phil Jackson. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because Pharrell can pull out things of you that you never even knew. That when I did Holler Back Youngin', at that point, I was kind of coming off the street of being like a mixtape rapper. So him telling me to go holler back in there, woo, woo, I'm like. That ain't me. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. But he like, man, I'm telling you. And then he gave me the flow of the rolling, go to Cedar. And I'm just like, like it's different. It's catchy. But I'm like, where I come from, they already know me for one thing already. Right. And I'm kind of stick to what they know me and love me for. And he was like, nah, he said, but you ain't saying nothing corny. You just changing the, the flow of what you already do. Oh, you know, as a New York lover of rap, you know what that mm -hmm. did when I heard you do that? Mm -hmm. It made me go, yo, he don't only dunk. Right. He shoot three. So in your right. mind, you're like, yo, I want to get to my dunk. I want to throw it through my leg. And, like, But you like, for me as a fan, I'm like, yo, this dude... He could shoot the three too. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like when it was. It, it, it maybe wasn't as obvious to for me, but it was like when Big did the thing with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, like, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like okay, he shoot three yep. too. So like for me, when I heard that you and Pharrell, I was like, yo, because I had all like I got nephews, me hip hop. Like I had every mixtape you ever did. I mm -hmm. knew Clue. I know all that circle. So I was just like, yo, he actually. Yep. the three. So and it took it took the, the Phil Jackson to get me to go there and take the right. three. You know what I'm saying? Because so, like you say, sometimes a player you're gonna go to your strength. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna. You know, you you know, you know I could get a bucket if I dunk it. Right. But now you you Phil Jackson telling like, yo, I've been seeing that three. You've been shooting in practice. You know what I mean? Shoot the three. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And 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 that's why I said, well, different people bring different things out of you, and and. Even from that coaching, sometimes it can make you make you push yourself. You know what I'm saying? Too now you want to try a different type of a uh, uh, different. Cause you know Michael Jordan. I also looked at that, that too. I was able to watch Mike's game was 
a lot of drives and and dunks and you know at the beginning of his career and then slowly progression of his career he started being able to do more things with the ball and never lost that drive never lost that being able to slash to the basket but he also added more elements now so it made him a little more like unpredictable you know what i'm saying yeah no question and then i see Luda's in here uh ludicrous last night had the battle with with nelly yeah um, that was a good I one i would call it a versus a battle because you know i think this is just my opinion fab i think at mm -hmm. this point like even when people ask me about jordan and lebron and who's the goat and all of that mm -hmm. i'm like we got to get rid of that element I right think. We got to get rid of like, oh, because if I say Michael's the best, that means I need to shortchange LeBron. Like, mm -hmm. we got to get out of that because for us as black people, it's very difficult to keep our people on top. So we can't internally right. just start being the crab pulling. No, nah, no, nah, Jay is better yeah. than Fab. And no, 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 no. We right. all living in this and understanding what it's about. Let's, ce let's celebrate each other. Let's not, it, it's not about putting one against the other when one has a success and another has a success. Let's That's what I love about Ludacris. Like you like you're saying, I looked at it as a celebration for Ludacris and Nelly's music. Both of them came in uh, early 2000s, late 90s, and, and changed the game. And they both got unique flows, unique right. styles that you had never seen before, before each one of them. And I, and, I, and I celebrate them for that. You know what I'm saying? They both had great music. I do think, I think Luda's catalog was, was, is really big. It's big. Like he has a lot of, whether it's his songs, whether it's features. I think Nelly had, Nelly had bigger, bigger songs as far as like sales and accurate. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, they, yes. They his top five, have, they, Mike, I'll sell his top five, but the right. 20, Luda just keeps hitting a certain number right. every time. Man. Right, and they and they both co and they both culture. They both right. coach. So we gotta we gotta celebrate that too. Like you know, they both came in and added certain these elements to hip hop that weren't there. You know what I'm saying? Nelly right. come right. from St. Louis. I, I never even. I to be honest, I think even when I was was going out, St. Louis wasn't even a main market that we stopped in. You know what I mean? You you, right. you being a basketball player, St. Louis. You might have played there and there, but it, they didn't. They didn't There's have no AAU tournaments we were going to in St. Louis until Nike right. brought it there by mistake. No, right. we wasn't going to St. Louis. So mm -hmm. for him to tap in in that market, it was like him busting open a, a a whole wide open market that people you know hadn't really really tapped into yet too. So you got to acknowledge both of them. I just celebrate both of them, man. Like they 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 great artists and they they contributed to hip hop as a whole. Yeah, I see everybody's talking. Um, you know, I see my man Cosigns in here from the interns. Everybody's oh, yeah. shouting you out. But uh, I, I would also, man, like in terms of, I saw somebody say Fab versus Meek, but I don't, I don't like Meek is. It might have a catalog, but your catalog started six, seven years before. As you mm -hmm. like. Who is like the era that you came like you know I, at the cover you used to be the covers of the sauces and the cover of those mm -hmm. magazines the next coming who's in your class so to speak that that's the hard part about it to me though I think like sometimes you got to find out who aligns with each other you know what right. I mean I, sometimes there's always an argument of who aligns um for me just talking about the the type of music and time and era. Maybe like a, a, a Ja Rule. Right. Um, but see, when, that you, Joe. Know, you know where that wouldn't be fair? Because Ja was super hot. We understood right. where he was. Yeah, but Ja then, was a top, top like, of the game at, at one point. You could put you put out something a month ago. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, right. so you you have the advantage that everybody, my son, my that's 11 and 12 is going to be like, I know this song. You know what I mean? Scoop right. it up. But there's nobody who has that. Maybe the, maybe the one dude you did the song with is, is Jada. Like, yeah. he, he's really the only one. But his songs, I don't know, always didn't. He didn't commotionally went out and get. Yeah, um, his, his J, Jada is a legend. Jada is a legend. Uh I, I even, like, even while we just said with Ja, Ja, ja was, like you said, at the, 
at, at one point, Ja was the top radio making re- like radio records, radio hits. There was nobody touching Ja at one point. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, you know, it's, it's just that's why I just said it's kind of hard just to line up who goes with who sometimes. Some artists is easier right. because they're in the same. Like even what you just said with Meek, Meek might be almost in his in, in, in his prime or, you know, within a couple years of the last few years of his prime versus me starting in 99, 2000. It's got, you know what I mean? It's like right. a 20 year difference of when it was. So it's hard. It's kind of hard. Yeah. What are you eating, brother, to stay looking like 19, bro? That's what we like. <laughs> y'all would die here to you. Man. Yo, you like what? Is you, Pharrell? Y'all are the same. What is that? The Illuminati diet that we don't know about? Like, Man, again. I think the game that I think the game keep you like the game got keep me running, man. That's the that's the only remedy I got. I wish I I wish I knew something that I could put in a bottle and sell to everybody. I would, bro. It's it's really just 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 staying 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 adapting to the game, really. Like that's it. I don't really know. Pharrell is another one, like you said. Pharrell, man, like he keeps himself young, and I think it's just loving what you do. I think when you when you when you work at something that you love. They always say it don't feel like a job. You know what true, I'm saying? True, true. Feel like it's probably like the same way when y'all were playing basketball. This is something you love. No, nah, never felt like a job. Never. You know what I'm saying? The only time it felt like a job, honestly, is when I had to go on a plane. Mm-hmm. Like when I jump on that plane, then I'm like, dad, I'm really going to work. Like right. when you there? On that court, yeah. Nah, nah, no, it never, never felt like a job at all. Right. I still love it. Still, the passion of it. Still, I think even when people start getting old or feel old or want to get out of what they do is when they lose the passion for it. Oh, I think I think I got that. I just got it. I was looking at some of the comments. I think I got the one. It's 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 a different vibe, but almost you and Nas, because Nas Mm. can put out something today. Everybody's gonna pay attention to it, just like they did two thousand. Where you put something out today. They pay attention to it, just like so. That would be Nas you know, is a hard Nas is a hard act too, because Nas. I don't think you always look at him as the most commercially appreciated uh, no, artist. The one with Lauren Hill, the, you know you. No, you no, no, no. Saying that he don't got smashes. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just saying that you don't look at him as the most commercially. But he's an icon within our cult. Like he's right. He's on the Mount Rushmore. When you say who's the best, you know the line. Right, right, yeah, yeah, no question. MCs, no question. Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas. You right, know what I'm saying? Like he always was. He's always there. You know what I'm saying? But I think he don't. You know, his thing was never about making commercial, right, no successful question. records. It was about his his skill as an MC all the time. You know I have what a mean? question for you, man, because you're the metaphor king in terms of like making people thought thought provoking what's your most favorite basketball metaphor that you used in a run wow because you had a whole i said so many i'm trying to think what's the best i I, know you're not the best just your favorite you you, you, you came up to me and said yo that one was crazy like it's 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 went all the way back to uh, uh, keep two nines on me like Warren Sapp for the Bucks, like all the way back since then, since till, till like you said, like till like a month ago, where it's something that I just recently, cause it's just that I think sports and hip hop kind of run parallel just because the figures and the, and the, and the, and the heroes of it come from the same communities almost. Right, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. We come from a lot of times. This is what we picked up to take away our, our our minds from what was going on around us to to something that we picked up as it could take us to the next level of life. Something yeah. that we picked up that was like camaraderie between you and your friends. You know what I'm saying? What connected y'all? What was y'all? So I think the same thing happens in basketball and sports, and I think that's why it's so easy to relate. But for me, metaphorically, like I always was a sports fan, so I always felt like I had to put some kind of thing or what was going on. I, I can't remember the exact rhyme, but it, I think it might have been in a mixtape because I was talking about it a couple weeks ago. The D'Angelo Russell line went, I don't know what... You know, oh, yeah, it was... It, I knew, I, it was something about... It was something about t- telling on your homeboy. Uh, right, right, something right. about that. Or, let your, or, or throwing your homeboy under the bus. It was right. kind of like... 
And so yeah. that to me was the first one that, I, that caught me off guard. And I was like, I was ready to use on TNT, but I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna let him live a little bit because you know he's a young player. He's made mistakes, and I let him live. But yeah. for you to say it was hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, it, it was. It was. You know, sometimes people like sometimes the people don't um don't take it. So you know, some people laugh laugh at it. Some people, is anybody like, anybody took it to it that wasn't like like yo? Why'd you go at me like that? I think the De- D'Angelo Russell. Might have took a little. He never really said anything or anything like that. But I, from the grapevine or like the way that, it, like the way it was like pushed out there, and from like the, the situation that happened, you know, sometimes they could get dogged in the media. So when you put it in a rap to highlight it, they might feel a way about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it, I don't. I, I can't be sure if he really because I never spoke to him on a conversation about it, but. I heard or thought that he felt the way because he played in Brooklyn. He played at the uh, right, right. No played at the Nets for a while. So you know the energy was like, yo, yeah. He was like, he, he ain't like that. You said that line. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yo, I've been, I've been making lines like that since I came in the game. And it wasn't right. done. I never was a, it never was derogatory or calling somebody out their name. It was really just you know bringing light to the situation as it's like current events. It's current thing. events. If you're not I'm speaking speak about it, it, right. You got to speak yeah, it. Everybody keep te- I see bombs. Everybody's saying bombs, bombs. Talk about Oh yeah, bombs. bombs is bombs is the last day. That's the last day. That's what the last that that the, the the beat of that came from that bull's intro. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, right. I remember that intro so it was so symbolic to the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? It was so yep. symbolic to like the way they came in the building, the way they came out to the court. You know what I'm saying? When you thought of them, you thought of there was not a lot of teams that had a symbolic song, like a beat that you connected to the team. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I'm not gonna lie, Fab, and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna hold you all day. I could talk to you for hours, but mm. that song, like you said, is kind of like when you hear the start of like. ESPN, TNT, like you knew there was about, and as a player walking into the arena and you're doing there and there and you hear that. Yeah. Uh, I even got chills <laughs> thinking about it. Like, yeah, because the lights go out, the lights go out, the, oh. the, the red lasers start going across the thing. And, and it's now, a, like, yes. you know, it gets, it's oh, a, man. And it's I, like they introduced the other team, and it's like, okay, and now. You know hey, and let me let me give you because I I always try to give people on a Michael Jordan story that they might not know now, just personal to me. So Michael, um, it was my rookie year. He had got when he got drafted. Reggie Theus was the two guard there. They traded him, draft Michael Jordan, and he mm-hmm. goes, "Yo, um, Reggie Theus says, yeah, in the paper, a, a guy as a rookie could never do what I've done for the Bulls." Mm. Now we understand. And what that means to Michael, like when mm-hmm. he hears that. Mm-hmm. So Reggie, I'm a rookie. I'm on Sacramento. The Bulls come in town. I go to the hotel, and I open. He opens the door, and the first thing he goes, Kenny, you tell that Reggie Theus, I'm gonna give him fifty tomorrow, and we gonna beat y'all. I'm like, come on. Mm. Like I just walked in. So, I, but I'm from where we from. That's what we do. I'm like, no, you ain't getting nothing. If I got to yeah. step up on you, and, blah, blah, and we talking going back and forth. So I go to mm-hmm. practice the next day, Fab, and I go, Reg, I was with Mike Ooh. last night. He said he's going to give it to you. Reggie's like, Reggie ain't that talk. Yeah, he not talking like, that Why'd long. you do this? Why'd you do that? Long story short, Fab, Mike has 47. They beat us. He comes into the locker room after the game to say, good, like, later, see you later. He says, all right, can't see you later because we played him a week later. In Chicago, he mm-hmm. goes, "Yo, good looking, Ken. El Reg, I told Kenny I was gonna get fifty, and I only got forty-seven. I'm gonna get fifty next week in Chicago." Wow! In the whole locker room, silent, and I'm like, "The dude just beat us, have forty-seven, and he's mad." Mm. Yeah, he's not done. He's not done. He was different done. animals, man. Yeah. Different animals. Yeah, different animals, man. So I know you that type of animal, brother. That's why I had to tell you that. That's my relationship. I know you that type of animal. You ain't done. Yeah, yet. you ain't I ain't done. done. I, 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 and it's like, like even a comment that I left before when you was on with, uh, with Chris Tucker. Like I'm still a student too. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. I still is is. I think the best thing you could do 
was keep learning every day and keep learning from other experiences. And like what Chris was saying, his preparation and, and you know, what, what led him to where he at today is being prepared. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like there's no, there's no, there's no age limit on that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There's no, like, you, you know, you, you don't get to a certain age and be like, oh, I don't got to prepare for this no more. Nah, you, if you go out and play ball, if you sign on to play ball six months from now, you're going to get out on that court and start shooting around and get your shot right. There you it is. There it is. You know, it's the same thing. So I I think as as people who want to want to keep being successful, you have to continue to learn and keep continuing to, to take in game and take in knowledge and take in uh, uh, people's experiences that, and make them work for you. You know what I'm saying? There's never nothing wrong with that. Without question, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Sitting in the in the in the in the double R, having a little light conversation with us, man. Oh, this this my this is my office during the quarantine. You know, <laughs> it's going crazy in the crib. So you got to no come out to the car. Hard man. work pays off, brother. Hard work pays off, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, good talking to you, brother. Love, King. My man. F A B O L O U S, man. That was, man. I could have talked to him for another hours because. I'm a metaphor guy when I'm on TNT, so I just appreciate everybody stopping in. Bro Parish, my man.